On Monday, June 5th, 2017, I felt the worst headache of my life, like an ice pick driving through my skull. A CAT scan revealed a bleed in the side of my head, the size of a softball. The only option to stop the bleed was to have a craniotomy to remove it. Being completely out of control is terrifying. It's difficult to talk to patients about brain surgery because it's very abstract. We're combining delivering difficult news about a scary diagnosis with the additional fear of not knowing what to expect and not being able to understand what it is I'm explaining to them. When we show them the model, when they fly inside their own brain, they can see the structures. They can see the tumor, they can see the aneurysm. This device creates an experience for the patient where nothing is unknown anymore. Well, it's certainly daunting to think about somebody tinkering around inside your head. There's a whole bunch of anxiety that comes with that. Patients are looking for some hope. They're looking for a way to understand what's happening. What's made brain surgery historically pretty challenging is surgeons have to look at two-dimensional imaging and then in their mind's eye create a three-dimensional map of how they might approach the operation. We thought, you know what, we can intervene here and we can take MRI and CT scans and fuse them together in our software to create a virtual reconstruction and change the practice of medicine for the benefit of the family, the surgeon, and the institution. It is that person's anatomy VRalized. The Intel processor really allows our content to come alive. We've worked with Surgical Theater, taking our latest desktop and notebook processor technologies so that we can very quickly render those 3D environments in the exam room and allow that patient to have a real-time immersive experience while their provider's in the room. Hi there. Good morning. Good to see you again. What you're looking at now, this is a three-dimensional model of your brain. You see the tumor there in green? Yes. Now, you're getting something to see that most patients never get to see. I was totally panic-stricken. I'm not a doctor, so I couldn't understand what they were trying to tell me because I had never physically seen a craniotomy before. It's so hard to wrap your head around what they're about to do. When I put on the goggles, my surgeon asked me if I was ready to fly. In the moments where they were telling me really terrifying things, I also felt a little bit of peace from the way that it was being presented. I was able to, in real time, see inside my brain. I was physically there with them, looking at exactly what they were trying to communicate. Before surgical theater, preparing for surgery was literally me sitting over a cup of coffee, kind of thinking, okay, I'm gonna do this, and then I remember that the optic nerve is here. But those preparations were a kind of ad lib. Now, with 360-degree 3D reconstructions, we're able to be inside that environment, which is as close to brain surgery as we can actually get without being there in the operating room. The advantage that the virtual planning and rehearsal brings to our readiness for surgery is the ability to simulate multiple different approaches. In a real patient, we don't get to try that more than once. We only get one shot at it. In the virtual model, we can do two plans, three plans, five plans, and see which one is the best for the individual patient. You make the bone look a little more like bone, so it's not translucent at first. Now that I can see the frontal sinus, I'm planning it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's bring in the microscope. When we're in the operating room and we get to the time of surgery, because we've done the pre-operative rehearsal, it kind of feels like deja vu, like, okay, I've been here before, I know where the important structures are gonna be. Here, here we are, we're coming up to the back of the tumor right here. This would be a good place to do an overlay. Make the tumor more translucent. I was at the hospital in the ICU for 10 days, and I had two angiograms, two MRIs, two CAT scans, and a craniotomy. I had a risk of having epileptic seizures for the rest of my life, not knowing that I'd ever be able to drive a car again, that I would ever be able to run again. But I would say the biggest testament to how everything went was the fact that I'm sitting here today. It was nothing short of a miracle. I think this technology is absolutely groundbreaking. I wouldn't use the word revolutionary. I would say it's evolutionary. I think virtual reality will change the face of healthcare. I think in some ways it already has. 
This is just an expertise that Intel possesses that has helped us advance in ways we never thought possible. People are demanding transparency. I think people deserve to be spoken to in a way that they can understand. It made me more grateful for each and every moment that we have. We experience life in three dimension. Why should our medical care be any different? Thank you.